Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. I'm honored to be here, and I'm honored to bring the message I have to you all today. Uh, this is a talk about love, about human connection, and about remembering who we are. I am, among other things, a psychiatrist. Um, like all of us, we're many things, and that's one of the things that I do. And so I have a chance to be in people's inner worlds with them a lot. You know, we, I get to see into people's inner lives in ways that aren't public, in ways that we would otherwise never necessarily know. And as you do that over many years, you start to get kind of like a collective pulse on what's happening. And sometimes I'm sitting with one person and I'm wishing to say, if you only knew how many people are feeling exactly like you do, but no one's talking about it. And so I'm here to share some of that with all of us. One of the things I notice when I'm in the room is that people are talking about um, feeling like a kind of frenetic emptiness, like something's missing, like they're feeling rushed all the time, reactive, not dropped in, not in their essence, not remembering who they are or who they were when they were 10 and how those things grow and develop over time. It's almost like they're standing next to their own life. Like if they could just pick up a record needle and move it over a tiny bit and drop it down again, they'd be in their groove, but they're not. And they know they're longing for something, right? Because there's such genius in longing. When we long for something, that means we know something's missing. We know something's off, and we remember it. We often have like a molecular remembrance of it, like a deep remembrance. And so there's that. There's that feeling that I know there's more, but what is it? And what's, what's off key in me? I want to show you an image. This is an image of... Uh, moths, as you can see, going towards a light. You'd think from this that moths love the light, like they're attracted to the light. Actually, they hate the light. They're stuck here. They don't know what they're missing. Moths are designed, they're wired to navigate based on a certain angle in relation to the moon. So they're trying to fly in relation to the moon. This is false moonlight for them. Looks like this. Going, going, round and around. They're actually looking for this, the real moon. What are our false moons? What are the things for each of us that keep us from genuinely navigating who we are and what we're here to do in the world? Tuning into our instrument, not just our mind, not just our heart, not just our nervous system, our spirit, our soul, our psyche, our energy, whatever we want to call it, our full instrument of what it is to be alive. A lot of things distract us and get in the way of that. We live in the age of interruption, of constant reactivity. There's always something demanding our attention. Check, text, fetch, answer, here, go, there, where am I? Right, get right back, go, come on, let's do it. Uh. And inside of that, it's really hard to find the deeper pulses, right? It's really hard because there's a lot of synthetic pulsing happening all of the time. But it's always right here for us, which is what that longing is and what we can remember. I want to give you an example of this, of an example of somebody tapping into their potential energy of what it is to be human almost immediately. So this is an art installation I did with my dear, dear colleague, uh, J.P. Robbins. And we got the vision, and we went out and did this the next day. And the vision was this. We were to go to uh, Washington Square Park, set up our camera, and approach people walking by spontaneously to ask them to participate under the tree. The instructions were very simple. Stand here. Think of someone that you need to say, I love you too. It can be an old babysitter, somebody that's passed away, a lover, a friend, a pet, even a part of yourself or a younger self. And when you've got that entity in your head, in your heart, just look straight at the lens, 
and through the lens say, I love you, only those words, I love you, until you feel it everywhere. Now, this film that I'm about to show you is one person doing that. It's silent. The idea of silence is listening with other aspects of ourselves than our ears. So sometimes we call the skin the second ear. So just be aware of how you're listening to this. And here we go. It's about a minute long. All of your faces have changed, too. That's beautiful. That's the mirror neurons at work, right? So you can see he activated his whole self, recruited all of his cells into that moment, took back whatever presence and energy was invested or divested in other things, and got it running through his instrument. This is what we're wired to do. This is our circuitry. This is what's available to us. You know, a lot of things can get in the way of that, of course. But this is always here. One thing that sometimes happens is we get stuck in one note instead of the full music. So in the age of interruption, say with our devices, for example, we can end up kind of looping over and over again in our brain. So this is the dopamine pathway of sort of reward slash addiction circuitry. So we end up using a tiny part of our brain to react, respond, react, respond, react, respond, and leave out most of the landscape of who we are and what we're wired to be. So um, you can think of that like this kind of loop or almost like a keyboard where we're hitting one note, and it's a fine note, over and over again, da, 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 da. but what about the rest of the keys? And what about using them all together? That's a different kind of music. This is music, right? So now let's talk about um, all of the ways that we sometimes get blocked and how to think about unblocking us. So here we have simple music, right? You see spaces, you see phrasing. There's always space in music. There's always pauses. This is what it sometimes feels like to be us, right? There's no pause. There's no rest. There's no space just for ourselves. It's not music anymore. It's a kind of like cacophony of chaos and just notes. It can sometimes feel like this, stuck between two radio stations, right? Where we can't get a pulse or a read or a tune to ourselves and our deeper messages trying to get to us. But if we're allowed to take some time and have a moment and tune in, we can get here. Or we could put rock and roll here or anything, because, you know, opera is good for effect. So the first thing that we want to think about in terms of unblocking is what I just described, which is about listening, right? Listening. And sometimes we think of listening and hearing as the same things, but they're actually really different. Listening is something we don't even necessarily need our ears for. It can be like we listen to the love portrait, right? In our body, in our heart, in our skin, with our full self-sensory system. Hearing is something we do with our ears. It's just sonically ingesting information. We don't have to interpret it. We don't necessarily even have to apply our consciousness to it. Listening is a conscious act. 
It involves our consciousness. It involves our whole being. Have you ever been with someone and they're saying, I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening. They're not listening. They might be hearing your words, but what you might be communicating is something else entirely, something that's beyond, below, above, around the words, something much more spherical than that. So that's listening. The second thing I want to say about listening is that when you listen, it creates a receptive field. So for example, one of my sons, he loves to dance. When I sit on the couch, he'll come out and he'll start, he'll start spinning. He'll start showing me what he's got. If I weren't on the couch, that creative act would have never happened. He knows I'm listening. So there, it comes out of him. So it's relational. We don't have one without the other. Listening is a co-creative act. So that's the first thing we can do. The second thing that sometimes blocks us is the rhythm. And I want to show you a really simple example of rhythm. When we're constantly reacting to things and we don't take a moment, we don't get to tune into our natural rhythms. We're more in a synthetic pulse the whole time, right? React, react, react. So here's a simple example of rhythm. It's our heartbeat. This is just an ultrasound or an echocardiogram of our heart. It beats and then it rests. There's a normal cycle, just like a sleep-wake cycle, just like so many cycles that exist, reproductive cycles, the lunar cycle. This is another very simple cycle, the creative cycles. All of these cycles naturally happen, but we have to be aware of what's going on internally to experience them. There needs to be pause, there needs to be rest, and there needs to be time to tune within. When we tune within, we can see that there are natural pulses that happen, natural spikes and natural rest periods, natural wavelengths. Thirdly, I want to say something about body language. So when we're, for example, on our devices or tuning the world out, we're hunched over. Just do this with me in your body for a second. Pretend to be working on something and just using your thumbs and, yeah, good, and just see how that feels. We're closing ourselves off from everything going on around us. We're using a tiny, tiny percentage of what we have to do that. Now just straighten your back and open your chest and see how that feels. See how that receptivity opens. Wow, it's like a different world from up here. That's amazing. Yeah. So this is an example from uh, a painting from the, the Dark Ages. Um, it's uh, Bruegel. And you see there's so many hunched figures. There's one guy even kind of hunching into a wall there. Versus the Renaissance. an open body, a receptive body, a body that's not just a body, right? It contains deep, deep intelligence, our whole nervous system and beyond. So on that note, I would challenge you guys to a few things. Think about what in your days are moments that you could just tune inward, turn inward, and pause. We're highly attuned creatures, right? Every moment we have an opportunity to do this, and it doesn't take a lot of time. So maybe before you walk through the door, take one moment to take a deep breath, to just feel yourself. Ask yourself, where am I? What's happening in me? What is my inner energy? It's like a blinking cursor before you type. Just take that moment. That's the first thing we could do. The second thing is create a space during your day. The way that Manhattan got designed was that they put out Central Park first. They, they designed Central Park and saved that territory, and the rest was organized around it. So what are the parks you can create in your days, even for five minutes, where really the only goal is to just be, just be with, not be by yourself, be with yourself. So that's the second thing. The third thing is that you could start to develop some kind of a practice where you start to really get to know what's going on inside, start to feel more and more of who you are and apply your consciousness to your inner music, right? Start to really hear that inner music, whatever it is. For each of us, we're so different. Our natures are so different. 
So no one else can do that for you but you. You are your own deepest, best listener. So those are all things to potentially try. And I would say, overall, just remember this image. None of us need to be stuck out on one leaf when actually we're the entire tree. Thank you very much.